Kirby compared you to Tim Tebow. That is some high praise. Is, when you, when you learn praise. that your head coach compares you to somebody that's had that kind of impact, not only on the field, but off the field, what right. are your thoughts? All right, uh, extremely thankful. I mean, because Tim, you know, he's, he's definitely up there in the books. You know, just trying to have that impact on the field with my teammates, but definitely off the field, you know, in the community, uh, you know, in the relationships with my teammates and, and whoever else I, I come encounter with. What's it like now versus when you first got there because I can't imagine what it's like being the man mm -hmm. on campus at the University of Georgia. Right, uh, it's it's tough sometimes. I can walk into a, a crowd at the grocery store, you know, and I can I can be there 30 seconds or I could be there for 30 minutes. You know, you know, you never know. Just part of the life I'm in. I'm thankful for it, and I, I wouldn't ask for anything else. Tell me a fishing story. Who taught you how to fish? <laughs> yeah, uh, my granddad. He, he taught me how to fish. You know, we're going out catch fish. I remember being young and, and I remember catching like a, a really, really, really big crappy. My granddad's cousin, you know, he pulls up and, you know, they, they hadn't caught as many fish as we have that day because we, we slapped warm out. And, you know, granddad, you know, he said, all right, you know, here you can have some more fish, you know. And then he takes a big fish that I had caught that day. You know, I'm like, no, you can't, you can't do that, granddad. I'm like, well, what are you doing? Granddad throws a big fish. I'm like, granddad, no, not the big fish. That's my fish, you know. And, and so I, I think I cried all the way home. I had to go catch me another big fish, you know, and, you know, that, that's granddad. Boy, just heartbreaking. It's going to take a while to lick those wounds. Yeah, folks. there's no doubt. Another heartbreaking setback for Georgia. Jubilation on the Alabama sideline once again. How did those two Alabama games shape you or reshape you as a player and a leader? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, tough games. You know, it is what it is. You know, obviously, you want to come out on top, but, you know, that's not the way the, the cards were played that day. And it made me better as a football player, it made our team better. And, and we're trying to do more throughout this, this offseason and go out and, and hit camp, hit, hit camp running. When you have a loss like that, and it's to a, an Alabama or, or whoever, how long does that hang with you? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm different than other people. For me, it's it's over the next day after I watch film on it. As soon as that film's over, it's like, all right, you know, I, I accept it. It is what it is. Let's go on to the next one. I thought I knew a thing or two about the game of football. I'm the worst ball spotter in the history of the game. I have an entirely new respect for what referees do. Don't throw no flag. It fell out of my pants. I'm sorry. Last time that I had the opportunity to see you was your spring game. And uh, you had a message for me at halftime about my ability to officiate. Ball spot. It was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Just terrible. <laughs> what are you doing? You don't understand how much I've enjoyed this. He says, hey, come here. Come here. He's warming up. He goes, hey, man, uh, I really like what you do in your job. And, you know, you, you do such a good job in your job, and you should probably keep it Very because you are a god-awful no. referee. Yeah. And I said, thank you, Jake. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.